Okay, here we go. Full squad, day one. Uh, questions? This guy got some t-shirts out there. You got your doesn't get matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, get better, Ryan. How long have you been here? I haven't have only had one cup of coffee, but okay. I mean, this is a kind of your one of your favorite days in every spring where you get the whole group together and talk about you know, goals and plans. And everything yeah, like it, it is. Uh, I think, you know, no matter what, you know, group you're, you're leading, whether it's a, it's a sports team, uh, business meeting, whatever, you get fired up when you have that many people in the room. And, you know, you're kicking off something. And then the beauty of our game, we'd start over every year. Um, there's 30 other teams are doing the same thing today. A couple of teams are ahead of us in camp. But uh, um, I look forward to it. It's fun. It's exciting. It also gives me an opportunity to reflect back, you know, on the different things that uh, we focused on or where we were at as an organization you know, in previous years and how we've grown. So uh, that part of it uh, usually uh, sinks in about 11 o'clock the night before. <laughs> like, wow, we've come a long way here. And we really have. Uh, but we got a long ways to go yet. Do you prepare the message <coughs> or the, the speech or whatever you might give uh, the night before? Do you think about it in the days leading up or do you kind of just go with it? When you, when I you think every before? day uh, – <laughs> Uh, it's months ahead of time. You know, you think about, you know, as you reflect on the previous season, certainly last year we, we left with a very sour taste in our mouth. We did not accomplish uh, what we set out to do, and that was to get back into the playoffs and, and you know, uh, experience what we did uh, in 2022. So, you know, you start talking to players, and, and I've said it a couple times this, this spring so far. I think this is the hungriest team I've ever had in a spring training. This team is wired a little bit different. Um, based on what they went through last year. And, you know, we've, we've made some additions. We've got some guys that are going to join our club, join our lineup, um, and those guys are hungry as well. So that's a good thing. You know. Why Can you talk a little bit about what you've seen and where that hunger has come from and how that's emerged? And I know guys have been down here. You've talked to them some in the off season, but when did you look and what did you see that said, okay, they're in a good place with this? Uh, I think the conversations I had in the off season were just a little bit different. And the conversation started – uh, with a direct message from me based on the things that we were doing uh, early in the offseason. But as you start to listen to players, you can understand they're in a little bit different spot. And then it really picked up for me when you start checking in after the first of the year, whether it's visits with guys, whether it's on the phone with guys, what their workouts are looking like. Like, it is a very focused group. Um, and that's a credit to them. Um, they, they've taken their off seasons very serious. Uh, I think the addition of some old faces coming back and joining us helped as well. Um, you know, Mitch Hanniger has a certain standard uh, that, that he abides by, uh, what he values, and having another guy like that that kind of knows how we're wired um, certainly helps. But uh, we're in a good spot. Uh, I'm really anxious to get this going. You mentioned some new additions that bring it back to Mitch. But in the half hour, we'll, we'll chat with Julio and just talk about, you know, just what he means to this team and this club. Well, I think what he means to the, uh, you know, the entire organization, City of Seattle, this guy's an awesome player, um, very young, tremendous person that we get to watch grow up <laughs> and, and, and quite a public forum uh, along the way. But I'm really happy with where he's at. Um, you know, physically, he always looks good. He's always ready to play. He's super talented. But I think a lot of the other stuff, the maturing – things that go along with, you know, those growing years, you know, 21 to 22, 22 to 23. Um, just, you know, how he's reacting to things, the questions he asks, um, you know, his responses when you do ask him questions. And he's learning. He continues to learn. So, again, we're just scratching the surface, I think, on what we can see from Julio. Um, and, and it's somebody, you know, he's a player that, you know, we all should feel really good about. I get to watch him play 162 games this year. And, um, you know, after seeing what he can do when he's on top of his game, <laughs> there's no better player in the game to watch. You've so heard rumblings that he wasn't very satisfied with the season overall. He was still finished his fourth in the MVP award. But there were some inconsistencies. What does it tell you about his potential if he's able to kind of put it all together over a six-month season? Yeah, I think Julio's done a really good job of, like, sitting back and assessing. You know, this is what – this is how I trained going into last year. Okay, this is how my season played out. And, and he's admitted, you know, I, I he had one really good hot streak, you know, month, month and a half. And it was unbelievably awesome streak. But other than that, there was inconsistencies there uh, in his game. And he just wants to be more consistent, like all the guys do. Scott? The other day, he was here. I think it was a lot of the guys took the day off just because it was leading up to 
because he was here, he was in the weight room for like two and a half hours working out, stretching, you know, just like when everybody else is here, he didn't pick, go on the field. It's just like, the, the, there's a, he was driven before, but there's a different kind of driven that he seems to have. Like, yeah, um, I think part of it is the, I mean, certainly, his off season this year was about as structured and maybe it's ever been um, for him and, and wanting to, you know, be that guy on a consistent basis doing it every day. And to do that, you need to train consistently. You need to have the right focus mentally every day when you come out there. What are you trying to accomplish today? Whether it's in spring training, as the season goes along, um, he's learning a lot. Um, he's really impressive uh, to watch a guy like that work. Your messaging to the team, like with what you boys want to do, that doesn't matter yet. Is it easier because there's so many guys that are here that have done it? I mean, like, you know, you brought in even like the non-roster guys. There's so many guys from your organization that are here that help to understand it. You don't have to push it maybe as much because the other guys get it? Um, yeah, I think, you know, when I look back, and again, this kind of comes from thinking about last night, like what's the ultimate goal? Where do you want to get to, you know? And I think if you're coaching a team, leading a business, whatever, there's certain things you want to give players. You know, for me, number one is structure. I think players need structure. I think we've done that. I think then I think you need to, have to you, you give the, you give as much clarity as you can to why we do what we do, so they understand what's coming. And then you try to be as consistent as you can be, and not maybe change the messaging from week to week or year to year, whatever. Be really consistent. If you do that, I think you give players a ton of freedom. Okay, they know exactly what's expected. We're clear. We're consistent. Now they have the freedom to just go play. And I think if your mind is free, you can play a little faster. It, it just things happen for you. So that's the goal. I think we're getting there. Um, I know we've been very consistent. I know we're very uh, clear in our, in our messaging and what we're doing and the structure certainly there. And you talk about a guy like Hanniger. Hanniger appreciates that. And I think that's why he's had really good years here. So uh, our other guys, J.P. Crawford appreciates that. Julio, as he's getting a little older, understands why it's important to be on time in all the meetings why it's important to respond to a text message within 24 hours. You know, things like that. And it takes a little while. But uh, the fact that you've got so many guys that have heard the messaging, they buy in. And, and again, talking about our standards, like it's all about the players, you know, holding each other accountable. And this group does that. A couple, like, you heard from Mitch, even Levi Stout. Like, they leave, they come back, they talk about how much they missed kind of the structure that you guys provide. Yeah, most young players don't want structure, uh, but they actually need it. And then as they get a little older, they realize, yeah, this is what I, I, I did want, and it does help me because it creates freedom. Uh, they're able to just go out and play. Scott, uh, a year ago, Bryce Miller and Brian Wu were, you know, top pitching prospects in camp. Now they're coming in here with some real big experience. What are you looking for this year compared to last year when you, you know, maybe hadn't seen them at the major league level? Well, I think, you know, all, both those young guys I did an awesome job for us last year, and I made comment to this at the end of the year. I thought those two guys, especially Bryce Miller, probably improved as much within a major league season as any young pitcher I've ever seen. I say all that, and he took it to heart, and he worked on a few things this offseason, adding another pitch, um, doing some things so he can continue to get better and take the next step. Um, you know, those guys learn a lot their first go around through the league. They also learn how quickly the league adjusts to them, and you've got to keep adding to your game or refining your skills, and, and both those guys uh, realize that. Um, they're very talented. Uh, but talent only takes you so far. You got to continue to get better, and, and both those guys are in the right spot as far as that goes. You seen a rookie like Bryce fit into a club. No. Everybody likes him. Like yeah. it doesn't matter catchers, pitchers. He hangs out with position players. Yeah, it's it's a very unique personality. I love it. Um, it it's it's straight Tex. You know, he's from Texas. Uh, he has fun with that. Uh, but he's a. I think we just kind of look at him as, you know, uh, the cowboy. He's got the hat. He's got the boots. Uh, this guy's into the analytics. This guy understands how to pitch, you know, shape his pitches. He, he gets all that stuff, and he's very interested in it. He wants to continue to, to learn more. He's got a growth mindset. And so there's a little bit of that, you know, cowboy facade. I'm just going to be the funny guy. I can fit in with all the guys. But there's a deep inside, like, he's really driven to be, to be an awesome pitcher. Are there any surprises off the field with him <clears throat> along those lines? Well, there's a lot of surprises. You, it's a, what's ever going to come out of his mouth every morning is always a surprise because he's not afraid to just like to leave himself out there. Most guys are very guarded. I don't want to go too far. I'll get exposed. They don't care. That's just who he is. And I think his teammates uh, appreciate that. And that's why he fits into so many different pockets within our clubhouse. He really can. Is anybody in that clubhouse he can go talk to? He last year after starts, he would, it was like he was laying on a couch in a psychiatrist's office just talking about it. Like yeah. he, you know, some guys can't 
process what they've done on the field. Bryce is there for 20 minutes just kind of going over every little detail. Yeah, I had a funny story. Last year he came out of a game and um, we were on the road somewhere and a clubby came up to me in my office. You know, this is two or three hours after the game. And he said, yeah, I got a good story for you. I said, what's that? He goes, your starter tonight, Miller, you know, he's up here and he had a full plate of sushi. He was in full uniform. He's just eating sushi. He goes, you'd just taken him out of the game. He said he was hungry. He just started eating right there. That's Bryce Miller. <laughs> you know, like he just like most guys, it takes them an hour and a half to kind of decompress. They got their work. He just, ah, what's for dinner now? Okay, I'll just grab the sushi right now. That's Bryce. Um, it, it's just it's just it's just a game. I say that, but it, it does mean a lot to him, and, and he is focused on on notching it up a level and, and having a, a complete season this year. So the rotation that you held on to, keeping all five guys here, the overhauled lineup that you guys have put together, the bullpen and everything. Do you feel like you guys are in a position to contend for the AL West and potentially win the first division title here in 20, 21 years? 22 years. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, we, I do. I think we have a good team. I think we're good. Um, it's really hard. It's hard to win in this league. I think it takes a lot of things to go your way. Um, but it really starts today, you know, going about things the right way, uh, the attention to detail, not just with coaching staff but with players uh, and buying in. But I do think we have plenty of talent in that room. Uh, we've seen what happens um, to the teams in our division if they get into the playoffs the last couple of years. They tend to fare very well. We have a tough division, but it's not going to be easy. You got to go through Texas, the state of Texas, and in Texas is also Houston. So uh, uh, it, it's not going to be easy. But uh, I like our team a lot. Um, we have very high expectations. So as everybody reported in that's supposed to be here, anybody going to be in hold back today or anything like that? Uh, I think we're in good shape. Everybody, as far as the position player group that went through physicals yesterday, everybody uh, checked off. They're they're good to go. Nobody. Uh, you know, slowed that much. Um, Urias is at third base. Um, you know, he played a little winter ball, had a little issue with his shoulder down there. So he'll be out there going through the drills and stuff. He's not just, he's not throwing it 100% yet, but it's, it's not a big issue there. Scott, a year ago, the whole league was kind of adjusting to, to a bunch of new rules in mm -hmm. spring training. Based on what your experience was in that first year, have you making any adjustments or in terms of tactical you know, changes going into the season that you're going to work on in spring? No, there, actually there is a couple adjustments to the rules again this offseason, right. and we'll talk about that with our players here in the next couple of days. Um, but I thought we did a really good job. We talked about it very openly up front. We were not going to um, you know, complain or bitch or whatever about the new rules. We were going to adjust. I think we were the least penalized team in the league as far as having the most infractions regarding because that's a credit to our players and coaches. We just like, okay, this is what it is. Baseball players can adjust, okay, and they do it really fast. And I think it also helped that we have a very young team. A lot of those guys were had been exposed to the rule changes, certainly the pitch clock in the minor leagues, um, and that did help. There's no question about it. But, uh, you know, again, um, our guys adjust pretty quickly. We talk about it a lot in the meetings and how we want to go about Things as far as the strategy changing on certain things, uh, those are things that, that the coaches throw around and test it out a little bit before we bring it to the players. There, there could be a few things there. Do you have an opening day starter? Yeah, we'll let you know. Closer to opening day. Is it? I mean, you do have, I think, multiple guys who. Oh, we have multiple guys that could start on opening day. There's no question uh, about that. We're very fortunate, and I think you've seen with, you know, I think the people in the industry are starting to recognize how good our starting pitching is too. Um, maybe not as much as uh, some of the teams on the East Coast, but that's okay. Uh, they, they eventually come our way out on the West. Uh, we have a really deep staff. We've got, uh, you know, three guys uh, that could start opening day for sure. Um, we're fortunate. We're in a good spot. I will say after opening day, and again, opening day is a big deal. I get it. Everybody's excited, but everybody gets the ball. Everybody will have a hand in us uh, ultimately achieving our goal. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. 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 Thanks.